Hi guys, welcome to the Art of Server. In today's video, I'm going to discuss how to choose an IT mode HBA SAS controller for your 12th generation Dell PowerEdge server. This includes servers like the R320, R420, R520, R620, R720, R720XD, and R820, as well as the tower servers like the T320, T420, and T620. If you're using one of these 12th gen Dell servers for something like FreeNAS, ZFS, Unraid, Linux Software RAID, and other software storage technologies, you're likely to need an IT mode HBA SAS controller for your storage. So I'm going to show you how to go about choosing the right storage controller for your 12th gen Dell server. Now there are a few other 12th gen servers that I'm leaving out of this discussion for now, and those include the T20, R220, and R920. To begin with, you have to determine if you have a mini monolithic slot, as this will be a deciding factor in your HBA choices. The mini monolithic slot is basically a special slot on the motherboard that Dell uses for their integrated storage controller. But unlike the previous generation of Dell PowerEdge servers, this does not use a standard PCIe slot. If you have a mini monolithic slot, you will also notice that you have a SAS cable from the storage backplane plugged directly into the motherboard instead of the storage controller itself. Not all 12th gen Dell servers have this mini monolithic slot. As far as I know, none of the tower servers like the T320, T420, and T620 have the mini monolithic slot. Most of the rack mount servers do have the mini monolithic slot except for the R820. So if you have a R320, R420, R520, R620, R720, and R720XD, you should have a mini monolithic slot. Okay, so if your server does not have a mini monolithic slot, then you're going to have to choose a standard PCIe HBA SAS controller. And for that, I'm going to refer you to my other video that compares a variety of HBA SAS controllers and will guide you to the right choice. You should see a card in the upper right corner, so go ahead and click on that. Now, if your server is one that has a mini monolithic slot, you can still use a PCI card instead. And in fact, that was what many people did before I discovered a way to flash the mini cards with IT mode firmware. However, now that it is possible to use the mini monolithic slot for an IT mode HPA, I highly recommend using a mini card instead of a PCI card. First, you'll save yourself a PCIe slot that you can use for something else instead of wasting the 8 PCIe lanes that are already allocated to the mini monolithic slot. Secondly, you can reuse the existing SAS cables which are already the perfect length instead of having to buy third-party SAS cables that are often too long resulting in excess cable coiled up somewhere in the server and blocking the airflow. So if you have that mini monolithic slot, definitely use it. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to discuss your HBA choices for Dell servers with the mini monolithic slot. Basically, it comes down to two choices, the H310 mini with IT mode firmware or the H710 mini with IT mode firmware. First, let's start with the H310 mini, which is based on the LSI SAS 2008 chipset. This is a 6 gigabit SAS 2 chipset with a PCIe 2.0 by 8 connection, which gives you about 4 gigabytes per second or 32 gigabits per second of bandwidth on the PCIe bus. The LSI SAS 2008 chipset is basically a single core PowerPC processor that runs at 533 MHz. Next, let's go over the H710 mini with IT mode firmware. The H710 is based on the LSI SAS 2208 chipset, but is running the firmware from the SAS 2308 chipset, which are very similar in architecture. This too is a 6 gigabit uh, SAS 2 chipset, but with the IT mode firmware, it connects to the system with a PCIe 3.0 by 8 connection, which provides about 7.8 gigabytes per second bandwidth, or about 62 gigabits per second. The SAS 2208 is a dual core PowerPC processor that runs at 800 megahertz, so it is significantly faster than the SAS 2008. So the primary factor in deciding whether to go with the H310 or the H710 mini is the type of storage you are using. My recommendation is to usually go with the H310 mini if you are using spinning hard drives. As hard drives max out at around two gigabits per second each, 
the H310 is more than enough to handle even up to 12 hard drives. Now the H310 can work with SSDs as well, but if you have a large number of SSDs and you have performance requirements that demand high IOPS, then the higher clock speed of the H710, as well as the higher PCIe bandwidth of the H710, can better meet those demands. So if you're primarily using SSDs, then go with the H710. Now, if you're interested in some benchmark numbers, I did make a benchmark comparison between the, H, the SAS 2008 versus the SAS 2308 with 16 hard drives, and I'll leave a card to that video in the upper right corner for you to check out if you want to see some benchmark numbers. However, performance isn't the only deciding factor, and the H710 also does have a few drawbacks. As mentioned earlier, the H710's SAS 2208 processor runs significantly faster and doubles the core count compared to the SAS 2008. For this reason, it does run significantly hotter, and that means your system may need to run the fans at a higher RPM, which results in more fan noise. So if having a silent server is one of your highest priorities, you might consider the H310 over the H710. In addition, anything that generates more heat often cons also consumes more power. And indeed, the H710 consumes a few watts more than the H310. So although the H310 is older, has less PCIe bandwidth, and slower clock speed, it has the advantage of being cooler, possibly quieter, and uses less power. All right, so far we've discussed all the technical reasons why you may want to choose a H310 or H710 Mini. However, there are also non-technical reasons that might influence your choice. A while ago, I released a video showing how to install CentOS 8 or RHEL 8 with a LSI SAS 2008 controller. I made that video because Red Hat removed several LSI drivers in RHEL 8, including the SAS 2008 chipset, which is in the H310. So this means if you're planning to use RHEL 8 or CentOS 8, the H310 is no longer natively supported. Although, as shown in that video, you can add that driver back using third-party packages. If you're interested in doing that, I'll leave a card in the upper right corner to that video so you can check it out. Similarly, the latest VMware ESX 7.0 has also deprecated the LSI driver for the SAS 2008 chipset. So if you're planning to use one of these operating systems and you don't want to deal with adding third-party driver packages, you might choose the H710 over the H310 based on the OS driver support situation. All right, guys, that pretty much covers all the different factors you need to consider to choose the right HPA SAS controller for your 12th gen Dell PowerEd server. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to see more helpful videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day, guys.